Convene back into the Finance Committee. Um, is there a motion to adjourn finance? Move to adjourn finance. Second. Any discussion on adjourning finance? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Finance is adjourned. Uh, now we're going to move into the public hearing. Uh, at this time, we uh, are going to open the public hearing to consider the rezoning of 881 Lafayette Road, parcel numbers 028-19C0867 and 028-19C0805 from an I-1 industrial to a C-3 general commercial. Um, Mr. Dutton, can you explain a little history on this before we do people for the rezoning and people against it? Sure. So this is a property on the uh, north side of uh, Lafayette. It's about uh, a little over an acre. Um, it's currently vacant land uh, owned by Manhattan and Metropolitan Housing Authority. Uh, so this request is to rezone the property from I-1 industrial to C-3 general commercial. Um, both zonings are obviously non-residential. However, the C-3 zoning uh, allows a number of commercial uses, office uses, services, and also conditionally allows uh, multifamily residential. There are only two districts that allow that. That's R4, which is multifamily residential, and C3. Uh, they're both conditional uses in, that dis in those districts. Uh, C3 was recommended to the applicant as there is C3 uh, on the north side of uh, Lafayette, just one lot away where there's no R4 uh, in the general area. Uh, you have some uh, items in your uh, packet that kind of go over the differences between the districts, obviously industrial allows a lot more uh, you know, manufacturing, warehousing, uh, those types of uses where C3 is a little more broad with uh, commercial and residential. Uh, the comprehensive plan is also referenced as it encourages a variety of uh, housing options, uh, including attracting uh, workforce type housing. And just a bit of a, bit of a history, the, the Planning Commission reviewed this at their March 10th meeting and unanimously voted to uh, for recommended for council to approve uh, the application. Thank you. Is there anybody at this time that wishes to speak in favor of the rezoning? See, do you have the rear microphone? Try to make it quick for you. This Thank you, uh, council. And uh, for the record, my name is Skip Sipis. I'm the executive director of the Medina Metropolitan Housing Authority, the applicant in this matter before you. Um, and the Housing Authority appreciates the relationship it has with the city, the long-term relationship, um, and the value it brings to the people that we jointly serve. Uh, the request tonight is an extension of that relationship. Real quick background, this request is made on the, based on the results of a comprehensive study that was done funded in part with an earmark from the state of Ohio, provided by State Representative Sharon Ray. The planning resulted in the production of what's called the Coordinated Community Plan to Prevent and End Homelessness. And it was produced by the Medina County Housing Network. For those that don't know, the housing network is made up of nonprofits, units of government, like the city and the housing authority, and government agencies, all with a bent towards helping people with affordable housing. The network serves as an advisory group to the Medina County Commissioners. The planning process was initiated back in February of last year. Um, members of clergy approached Mayor Hanwell um, about them being inundated with the requests from members of the community for help from those facing various housing crises. You'll recall last year at this time, we were in the throes of the pandemic. Many churches and nonprofits, those who aren't affiliated with the housing network, um, were really exasperated by the number of people that were knocking on their doors asking for help, and they wanted to know what could be done. The mayor convened a meeting. Uh, County Commissioner Steve Hambly was in attendance. Many department heads were there. Law enforcement was represented as well. The network's planning process was driven by data. Data was collected from churches, government agencies, and the nonprofits I've mentioned. To pro that provided assistance to households over the years about emergency assistance. What we learned confirmed two things. One, that Medina County is made up of caring and generous institutions and people. We also learned that hundreds of thousands of dollars were being spent every year to assist people with various housing crises, crises ranging from homelessness to being at imminent risk of homelessness. 
The sad part of that was that those resources weren't being coordinated in any way so that services could be provided, the people being assisted that could get to the root causes of those issues. I think it's important to note that affordable housing is not a federal entitlement. If you're food insecure, there's a federal program for that. In my day it was food stamps, now we call it the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, SNAP. If you're poor and need medical assistance, there's a federal program for that. Those are entitlements. If you don't have a place to live, there's no federal entitlement for that. Instead, every resource that the housing authority gets, we have to compete for or earn. The plan that was produced calls for a three-prong approach. The first was to study the, and determine if there was a need for an emergency housing shelter, and if so, how to size it and locate it. The second prong was the need for what we call rapid rehousing. People who are in, a, in an emergency situation need to be housed. We call this the housing first approach. It's hard to focus on vocational training if you don't have a place to sleep. It's hard to focus on issues of wellness if you don't have a roof over your head. It's rapid rehousing. The third prong is the purpose of my being here tonight, and that's to provide what's called permanent supportive housing for folks who are, are federally, have a federally qualifying disability and in need of affordable housing. A person with a federally qualifying disability could be a veteran with a traumatic brain injury. It could be someone with a developmental or intellectual disorder. It could be somebody facing some other disability that challenges their life. Each of these prongs include wraparound coordinated community services. That's what we do now. Housing Authority already serves residents in conjunction with other agencies in this county. The same would be true for this development. Those service could, services could include vocational enhancements, uh, wellness uh, programs, and services like are being provided in other jurisdictions. Life skills are what the folks need to help them avoid these crises in the future. This project, to assure a cost-effective approach to it, the Medina County Commissioners donated half of the land that's in question tonight to the Housing Authority. Housing Authority uses it as its unrestricted reserves to purchase the other parcel. Cobbled together, we have a little over an acre of land where we know we could build 11 units, 10 units of which would be designated for people with a federally qualifying disability. We know this in terms of data from the most recent census data that there are 2,147 Medina County households with incomes below the poverty level. It's almost 10%. And that's just, just $12,880 for a one-person household. We're talking about serving people with higher incomes than that, which means the numbers that could be served are even larger. The Housing Authority itself serves approximately 1,300 households a month. Clearly, the math demonstrates that the demand far exceeds the supply. We need more units. And of those served by the Housing Authority, what we know most of all is that we need one-bedroom apartments for folks so that they can settle in to a unit. A couple things for you to consider as well. Typical SSI payment, Supplemental Security Income, for folks that are disabled, is $841 a month. Fair market rent for a one-bedroom apartment, including utilities in this county, if you can find one, is $732. The city's, your city's, current comprehensive plan is found on your website, states, and it's my city too, I live here. Um, states has a goal that it would to enable, through zoning and other regulations, the establishment of emergency shelters, homeless shelters, transitional housing, protective care, and other facilities as it seeks to encourage the development, redevelopment, rehabilitation of housing. This is a request not for a shelter, this is a request to build some apartments for people who can use them. The coordinated community plan to prevent and end homelessness was adopted unanimously by the housing network. And it comes with an allocation of the American Rescue Plan funds from the county commissioners. So not only did they donate the land, they're designating part of their dollars to make this happen. Site is adjacent to institutional uses. I think you're familiar with it. It's adjacent to the juvenile detention center. Um, and it's crossroad from what you have zoned as high density residential housing. 
The rezoning request is consistent with the housing's CHIS and community block grant programs as it seeks to provide affordable housing opportunities. So I'll shut up at this point and say that the request for rezoning, if granted, allows the Housing Authority to continue to partner with other community service organizations. And if you know anything in this county, we have great service organizations. We just need to be able to get people housed, wrap those services around them, and try for the best outcomes possible. That concludes my remarks. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak in favor? Yes, Mr. Kimberly. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Steve Hambly, resident of Brunswick, and, but I'm also Medina County Commissioner. Um, I'm here to support the uh, rezoning application. Um, I recall when I was going through uh, about a couple decades ago, grad school, leader urban studies, uh, the discussion of uh, what's called the Euclidean, Euclidean zoning hierarchy that uh, the, you have these various levels and the more impact you know, your zoning is based is on the impact uh, of your land use, on your adjoining properties as well as the community. And we know residential has the least impact on, on the neighbors, the more commercial, you have more of an impact and therefore have uh, uh, necessary regulations and, and requirements and industrial having pr pretty much a very huge impact. And as I understand the proposal is taking this, what has been uh, actually zoned and in place for a very long period of time industrial which has the highest, you know, the highest level of an impact on within a community to actually somewhat a little bit less. But when I talk about impact, I'm just talking about in terms of the, the, the maybe negative externalities. Well, I'm actually, this is gonna have much more of an impact on the community because it's gonna be providing a very necessary housing, housing uh, uh, for the community. As uh, Skip Sipos indicated, <clears throat> this is targeted to fit within the overall comprehensive plan. Having been a county commissioner and returned uh, last year and continuing working with the housing network, we have gone through a comprehensive plan and developed and looked at the county as a whole, identified the population that need to be served, and of course what needs to be constructed in order to provide services to that. We do have a deficit, we have a gap in, in a lot of housing. And this is one of those areas, as uh, Skip had mentioned, that we have that rapid housing, we've got emergency shelter. This is that permanent supportive housing. And long range, long range planning shows we need to look at our workforce housing. We need it that it's affordable. We need, we need to make sure that it's safe. We also know that it has to have flexibility. People, as they transition through life, life I think that many of us, so we didn't own a home immediately when we got old enough to move out of our house. You rented for a while and until you could afford and then have a house. And then of course there are those that become seniors, they actually end up going back into rental situations. So our housing changes even with, with some stability. So what we're looking at is people, unfortunately because of circumstances, could be medical, could be other, it's when we start talking about disabilities, something that they didn't plan on, something not their fault, how can we help them in that transition? How can we provide assistance? And that's why it's a supportive housing in working with our agencies, making sure that those individuals that are, have that ability to have a safe and affordable housing and still participate in our workforce. And that's so very important to, for not only the individuals, the families, the community, as well as the county. So on, I'll just say on behalf of myself, uh, I urge you to consider the rezoning. And I would add, at least from my viewpoint, the county commissioners did not don donate the land for it to remain fallow. It should have a public purpose. And I think this is a higher public purpose than what, is, what had previously been designated. A higher public purpose that benefits those individual families as well as the community in serving and making sure that people have an affordable, safe environment, place to live and thrive. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else that wishes to speak in favor of the rezoning? Yes, sir. Tom O'Connell, Executive Director of Habitat for Humanity of Medina County. I just want to take a moment just to read a letter I believe uh, Mayor Hanwell passed on to all the members of council, but just want to read it uh, so it's in public record here. On behalf of Habitat for Humanity's Board of Directors, uh, I want to thank you for your continued support of Habitat's work here in Medina County. Habitat is committed to the vision to see a world where everyone has a decent place to live. 
and views the entire housing spectrum from homeless prevention to home ownership as important to our county's success. This perspective led Habitat to participate in the development of the plan Skip mentioned just a moment ago. And again, one of the key components of this plan, um, the plan's housing crisis response system, is a need for more permanent supportive housing units here in Medina County. Habitat for Humanity of Medina County is aware of the Housing Authority zoning request, a, reason, a change request for 881 Lafayette Road. And the Habitat for Humanity Board of Directors are in full support of this development and see this as a vital part of the plan to prevent and end homelessness here in Medina County. Thank you for your continued support of Habitat and all the organizations that work to provide safe, decent, and affordable housing for residents here in Medina County. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak in favor of the rezoning? Mary Hamill? I don't generally speak on these, um, but I've worked uh, very hard with Skip and the local pastors here and uh, many of the nonprofits that for years have been taking care of the homeless. And I'd simply state on the record that it's our turn. It's our turn to, to step up and, and do what's necessary for this supportive housing. This is just one component of a multifaceted approach, um, but this is a chance uh, for us to make a difference. And I, I just want to publicly thank all the nonprofits and the churches that for years have been using their own resources to help get us to this point. And I, I firmly feel that now it's time for us as a city, and we've already heard that the county has stepped up to make this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to speak in favor of the rezoning? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Rose. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Planning Commission, uh, when we reviewed this, when Mr. Sipos brought it to us, um, it was passed unanimously because we all felt that we do, we do see the need for a facility such as this in the city. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to speak in favor of the rezoning? Mrs. Hazeltine? Thank you, Mr. President. Um, as most of you know, uh, the proposed location is in Ward 1. And the reason that I am sitting here is exactly because of that. It's that higher public service calling. This is my passion. I wanted to have a platform where I could make things like this happen. And now it's happening. So I'm 100% in support of doing the rezoning, doing what we need to do to provide for our residents. I have been in that position. I am one of those people that's one big financial bill away from being homeless. It's a very real situation here in Medina, and it's very familiar to a lot of people in Medina. So as the mayor said, as Councilman um, Rose said, you know, I, I stand in support of this when it comes my way. You have my vote. It is very important to me, not just for Ward 1, but for the county, for the entire county of Medina, that people do have that quality of life that they deserve. And part of that quality of life and those wraparound services that were discussed starts with having a roof over your head. And this is our chance to be a part of making that difference. And that's why I got into this. So I'm very excited to be able to lend my voice with yours. And I see, I can say I pretty much know every single person in the audience because I've worked with you in nonprofit and you're doing great things and I love it. And this, you guys are the reason I love being here all the time because Medina is such a great community. So thank you guys for showing up, showing out and letting us know that you are as passionate about this as some of us are. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak in favor of the rezoning? Is there anybody that wishes to speak against the rezoning? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. At this time, I'd like to call the April 25th, 22 council meeting to order. So if you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance.
Will the clerk please call the roll? Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Liam. Here. Rose. Here. Shields. Here. Simpson. Here. Coyne. Here. Reading of the minutes. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that the minutes of the regular meeting of April 11, 2022 is prepared and submitted by the clerk be approved. Second. Discussion on the reading of approval of the minutes. Will the clerk please call the roll on the approval of the minutes? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Reports of standing committees. The Finance Committee met prior to uh, Council this evening. We'll meet again in two weeks. Health, safety, and sanitation. Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. There's no meeting scheduled, nothing to report. Public properties. Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mr. President. No meeting scheduled, no report this evening. Special legislation. Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, last week we had, a, had the first meeting on, on feeding wild animals slash um, um, discussing um, reducing the deer population within the city limits. <clears throat> and the second meeting um, where the public will have an opportunity to speak and, and I think gather uh, information like we did at the previous meeting last week. Uh, the second meeting will be on May 18th at 5.30 right here in, in City Hall. And then I will schedule a third meeting at which time special legislation members will, will vote um, um, on, on whatever we have arrived at after we get that information, we'll vote on that. And um, it's interesting to me because there are, this is one of those issues that, you know, there are people that have, have a, they feel this way, they like to take pictures of using the deer, for example, the deer, they like having them in their yard. Other folks, absolutely might like them, but they do not like them being there. They think there are too many. And um, one of the things I noted at the meeting that we had last week was how well, um, how positive it was. Folks got up and spoke on, you know, liking them. Folks got up and spoke on wishing to see them called. And um, we tend to term things when there's two, two visible sides as controversial when in fact it's really just a difference of opinion. And my impression from the first meeting we had was there was just folks there that, you know, had a difference of opinion. My expectation is that the meeting we have on the 18th will be exactly the same, um, reasonable, responsible, positive, um, and, um, and informative. And then we will make, make some decisions on the committee and, and depending on what those decisions are, they will come up to council. So I think it speaks well for the community that we can get together on an issue that could be termed divisive when in fact it simply is we have folks with disagreement on, on how to address these, these situations, whether it's feeding wild animals in general or it is um, how to or whether to um, reduce the uh, deer population within the, in the city limits. So I'm looking forward to the next meeting and, 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 our, and our opportunity to make a decision um, to the benefit of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Streets and sidewalks, Ms. Hare. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. I have no meeting scheduled and I have nothing to report. Thank you. Water and Utilities, Mrs. Hazeltine. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Water and Utilities has a meeting scheduled for tomorrow at 4 p.m. here in the Council Rotunda. We will be discussing Medina TV and their budget. Thank you, Emerging Technologies, Mr. Rose. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no meeting scheduled, nothing to report. Thank you. Request for Council Action. We have several for finance. We have 2297 Walmart Community Grant Fire Department, 2298 2022 SPCA contribution, 2299 Increase Finance Department Petty Cash from 125 to 250, 22100 McDac Grant Application Police Department, 22101 Real Estate Purchase Agreement Airport, 22102 Increase Expenditure for Firestorm Gear Police Department, 22103 Budget Amendments, 22104 <coughs> Memorial Pool Cabana Rental Rates, 22105 Easement Right Away of Entry Contract West Smith Reconstruction, 22106 Wheeling and Lake Erie Waterline Crossing Agreement West Smith, 22107 Wheeling and Lake Erie Letter Agreement West Smith, 22108 Bids for Ray Miller Parking Lot Expansion and Dog Park, and 22109 Amend Codified Ordinances Section 941 Garbage. Reports of Municipal Officers, Mayor Hamill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm happy to report that the Memorial Day Parade will take place this year as it has in the past uh, prior to COVID. The lineup is from uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. on May 30th. The parade start, steps off a little after 10 a.m. They have a ceremony there in front of the uh, Common Pleas Courts. It starts at Broadway in Washington, goes west on Washington to Court, north on Court to Liberty, 
east on Liberty to Spring Grove and south on Spring Grove and into the Spring Grove Cemetery. There will be a ceremony at the monument at the Spring Grove Cemetery that will start about 11 a.m. or whenever the parade completes. For veterans groups interested in taking part, you may contact Ed Zachary at the Medina County Veterans Office. I'd like to encourage the uh, residents and county voters, for that matter, to vote in the May 3rd primary elections for, um, for the various issues. Um, Krista Wasowski, our health commissioner, is here and will address council during the public comments, but I wanted to publicly thank her for uh, attending not only the meeting, but for the efforts the past two plus years uh, dealing with this pandemic and the great job that the health department did. Uh, I'd, li I'd like to continue to ask for prayers for the Ukrainian people. Uh, keep them in your thoughts and prayers as they experience this um, conflict and violence, both relatives here and those who continue to attempt to reside in the Ukraine or attempting to flee from same. And uh, I remain hopeful to bring this attack to an end as soon as possible. And last but not least, I'd like to invite up Kathy Patton to join Council President John Coyne and I up front. I'm as surprised as you are. <laughs> well, Kathy did not put this on the agenda. This is all I saw. Oh, we're, gonna, we're stuck over here. Well, this is for the 53rd anniversary of the Professional Municipals Clerk Week. And this is in recognition of Kathy Patton. So we have a proclamation to present to you. Whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world. And whereas the Office of the Professional municipal clerk is the oldest among public servants and whereas the office of the professional municipal clerk provides the professional link between citizens the local governing bodies and agencies of government at all levels and whereas the professional municipal clerk have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality rendering services to all and whereas the professional municipal clerk serves as the information center on the functions of local government and the community and whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk through participation in the education program, seminars, workshops, and annual meetings of their state, county, and international professional organizations. Now, therefore, well, Dennis Hanwell, the mayor of the City of Medina, members of the City Council, do hereby recognize the week of May 1st through May 7th, 22, as Professional Municipal Clerk Week, and further extend appreciation to our Professional Municipal Clerk, Kathy Patton, for the vital services she performs and exemplary dedication to our community. In witness whereof, the mayor and the president of council set their hand to this proclamation. And Kathy, we appreciate everything you do. I know you have to put up with seven of us, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is hard to do, <laughs> but we know you enjoy your job every day and you, you appreciate uh, helping and assisting the citizens of the city of Medina. So congratulations and here's your proclamation. Did you want to talk, Kathy? <laughs> okay, you're nope. welcome. She just likes the call roll. <laughs> uh, Mr. Durham, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Chief Kinney, Police Department. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Mrs. Marshall, Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple items to note for Council and the public this evening. Our next round of ribbon cuttings are scheduled for Friday, May 6th. We have four of them that day. The first one starting at one o'clock in the afternoon with Studio A Salon located at 1162 North Court Street. At two o'clock, we will go over to Buckeye Leaf Boutique at 119 Lafayette Road. And three o'clock, Discount Tire at 1008 North Court Street. And then at four o'clock, the Not Yourself um, it's like a massage and yoga studio at 238 South Elmwood Avenue. And all of the ribbon cuttings are done in conjunction with the Medina Chamber of Commerce and Main Street Medina. And we hope that you will join us that afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Piccoli, Service Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report, but I want to do thank Krista from the Health Department as well. I think we called her every day for the last two years and emailed and uh, she was a great helper and her staff, so I thanked her earlier, but publicly I want to acknowledge her. And congratulations, Ms. Patton. She helps us with a lot as well here. Thanks. 
Thank you. Ms. Lestuka, Ms. McCourt. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing report from Ms. McCourt. Thank you, Mr. Gladys, building official. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. Mr. Worley, Parks and Recreation Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple things. Um, last Friday was Earth Day, and we had a event. Uh, Medina Early Childhood PTA uh, came the evening, Friday evening, and planted 60 trees at Reagan Parkways, um, or at Reagan Park. So I wanted to acknowledge them for that. Uh, they did raise all the funds um, for that project. Um, in addition, uh, this week is Arbor Day, or yeah, this week is Arbor Day. <laughs> Thursday, the mayor has proclaimed Arbor Day in the city of Medina. Uh, so Kiwanis will be uh, providing seedlings to all the third graders um, in the district. Um, I know the kids are looking forward to that. They're having the, um, they're, they're presenting the awards at uh, the Kiwanis Luncheon. Um, in addition to Thursday being Arbor Day, Friday is National Arbor Day, and we're doing an event uh, with First Energy uh, and their employees, as well as Asplen Tree Service. Uh, they're going to gather at the Q and Todd Conservation Area at the end of Gayer Drive, 10 o'clock on Friday, um, and we'll be planting 200 plus trees um, with all of their employees. Additionally, on May 1st, um, we have nine Girl Scout troops uh, who have come together and are going to be planting trees uh, at a different area in Reagan Park. So we're thankful for all those events and all the new trees uh, that are be being provided to the city at no charge um, and look forward to that. Um, additionally, our uh, outdoor pool season passes will go on sale beginning May 1st. Um, you'll be able to purchase those online. Uh, so check out medinarec.org uh, for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Patton, City Engineer. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just to remind the public, we do have three projects that are currently in the bid process here at City Hall. Our South Court Water Tower Exterior Recoding Project, also the Gates Mills Culvert Replacement Project, and our 2022 Concrete Street Repair Program. Those are all bidding currently. We open them each within the next two weeks. Thank you. Chief Walters, Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a quick reminder, the fire department is uh, continuing to accept applications for the position of part-time firefighter. We'll be doing that through the end of the month. Um, and if anybody needs additional information, they can find it on the city's website under the fire department page or on our Facebook page or just by calling the fire department. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dutton, Planning and Community Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. Uh, next, we have confirmation of mayor's appointments. We have one, Brian Hire, a CRA Housing Council for a term expiring 12-31-24. Move to confirm the mayor's appointment. Second. Any discussion on the mayor's appointment? Will the clerk please call the roll on the confirmation of the mayor's appointment? Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hare? Yes. Hazeltine? Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Notices, communications, petitions, there are none. Unfinished business, there, there's none. Uh, introduction of visitors. Members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during a portion of the council agenda devoted to introduction of visitors. All comments shall be directed to the chair in a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. If there's a group, please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the rear microphone and state their name and address so it can be entered into the minutes. Members of the public will be afforded the opportunity to comment on other portions of the meeting as determined by the chair or by a vote of the majority of council members present. Is there anybody that wishes to address council at this time? Yes, Chris. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to take a few moments to this evening to speak with you. You know, the Medina County Health Department has been serving this county for over 100 years. And back when we began, it was about controlling diphtheria and scarlet fever and smallpox. But now in modern times, we're more about prevention and promotion of health and well-being within our community. So you know us as the Medina County Health Department because your predecessors and my predecessor saw to it that we had one health department that served all counties, cities, and villages within our county. And unlike other jurisdictions in Northeast Ohio, some of them have as many as four health departments where citizens have to figure out who to call to find a birth certificate, or who to call to find a particular program. But here in Medina County, we've been very efficient. And we've done that 
through the combined efforts. We heard earlier today how many organizations all work together. And that's what the health department is a part of, that fabric of our community, serve, making sure that the citizens of Medina City are served and have resources available to them. One of the things that I wanted to let you know about, we do have our levy that's on the ballot May 3rd. I know there's been confusion about whether there's an election or not. We are voting, open voting is, is occurring right now, walk-ins, you can still get absentee ballots. But I wanted to make sure that you as city council members had the opportunity to ask me any questions that you might have about the levy that's on the ballot. The Board of Health is asking for a 0.7 mil renewal. That levy has been on the books since the 1950s. It's the way the health department has been funded as an agency, one of the many ways. Levies represent about a third of our budget. The other, the, we have a third that's grants and, and fees, and then we have um, contracts. Those make up the budget that we have. The 0.7 mil is very important to us. It's been renewed for, at 0.7 for 30 years. So we've had that same amount that we've been bringing in and using to do the programming of the health department. At this point, we need to renew that. We're asking the voters to renew that. But we also have a 0.15 increase attached to that request this time. And I wanted to make sure that you knew that that increase, what that was going to be used for. Technology has changed in the last 10 years since we renewed. We have servers and laptops and we have antivirus software and all the things that come along with that. And we have to do that to be a modern health department, to interact efficiently with our businesses. I'm looking at Kimberly, we can now, plumbing, plumbing used to have to send in rolls and drag them into our department and wait weeks for us to mark them up and get them back. And now they can electronically submit those my plumbers can electronically record on those and send them back out to people. We, we want to be efficient. We want to be responsive to the public. In order to do that, though, we have to do that in a safe and secure way. That's one item. The other item, which is the, which is the larger, honestly, of the two, we used to be able to pull in grants, and we still do. We have many grants from the state and directly from the feds. But with those, we need to put, those, we put, need to put the money out first and then be reimbursed. And that's a shift in the last 10 years. The state used to give us that money up front, and in the fourth quarter, we kind of evened up with them. Now we have to put all of the money out and then wait for it to be reimbursed. And we have over a million dollars a year that we have tied up in that waiting process coming back and forth from the state. So for those two reasons, we need to not just renew the 0.7, but we need to ask for a very small 0.15 increase to that. And we've done that. Asking for a 0.7 replacement is far more money than we need. The Board of Health only wanted to ask voters for what it is that they needed to continue to operate. So the levy costs $14.70 per year for a $100,000 valuation, and $5.24 of that is what your increase would be. So I just wanted to make sure that you knew that. We were on the ballot. We lost by seven votes in the fall, and, and I'll be honest with you, we were in the middle of doing so many other things, and it, we just didn't do our due diligence, I believe, in letting the voters know what we were asking for, the size, what that small amount was, and why we, why we needed it to continue to operate as your health department. So with that, I can certainly answer any questions that you have. Thank you. Anybody have any questions at this time? I don't have a question, but I, I just want to, and I think you probably hear this from other people, I learned more about the health department in the last two years than I ever than I ever would have imagined, and I and I learned more importantly, I guess, to appreciate the services that you provide. You know, it was it was absolutely incredible. Um, even the process of getting the shot at the health department, the organization, and the skill in and in, in, in the planning that was involved in that was so impressive to me. Um, just as a guy standing in line waiting to get a shot. So I mean, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any other questions? Mrs. Hazeltine? Thank you, Mr. President. Just a very quick comment. Krista knows I am a big fan of her and all of her employees and the work that they do. Um, just to echo Councilman Lamb's comments, I have used almost every aspect of the health department over my <laughs> somewhat short lifetime. Um, you know, I've used the WIC program. I've used Project Dawn. I have gone there for dental work. I went there uh, for a COVID test. I mean, every single service that they offer, when I was at the recovery center, uh, they always sent a nurse practitioner to come in to speak with both men and women about contraception. Um, 
I can't say enough about how much our health department does, and I already voted, so I voted for you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Uh, Chris, I just wanted to say your, your organization is such an asset to the county. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Yes? Okay. Michelle Mayer. I'm actually another resident of the city of Brunswick. Um, and I'm Carrie Huff, and I am City Medina. And we are Medina Meow Fix, which you guys all know. So um, we wanted to give you some updates on our numbers and our statistics, um, kind of what's going on, you know, since our seven months of inception. Um, citywide, we did bring our county numbers as well. Um, we are working really closely with um, Medina County SPCA. Um, you know, we obviously don't work directly with them, but we do, you know, partner with a lot of groups now in Medina. Um, Save Ohio Strays has donated to us. Um, Ultra Pet has donated to us as well. Um, we are working with Alley Cats and Aristocats and helping them get um, launched. And now we. Um, have also been working with a feline um, leukemia group as well to uh, any of the cats that we have taken in who are um, ill that might have a chance at a life, we, we do try to get them adopted instead of euthanization. Um, at this point uh, in the city, we do have a 43% adoption rate with our TNR program, so we're not just throwing them back on the street. Um, Michelle's here and she's going to give you all the stats and numbers. Um, yes, we, um, we, our big partner obviously is the SPCA. They're the ones that helped us launch and they're the ones because we weren't fully um, a, a, 501. a 501 yet when we came here initially. They're the ones that um, took the initial grant money that we, that we received from the city of Medina and then from the Stevenson Foundation. Um, the actual county money that we use with the Stevenson Foundation has been, um, we have used that. Um, we actually did uh, 357 cats um, with that money. Um, and obviously that's more than um, the $10,000 because 43% of it was um, adopted, the cats were adopted out um, through our rescue organizations um, that we've partnered with. Um, Obviously, the SPCA being the, being the biggest one that's partnered with us, and they also take in um, all of the injured cats that we um, that we that we have to do something with. Um, they help us with that, and um, and and ill, and ill cats as well. Um, and then we did partner. We have um, come across uh, everything's been a learning curve, but we have done. Um, I have come across some cats that have been leukemia positive, and so we have partnered with a rescue group that specifically um, adopts out those cats so that they can have a good life as well. Um, our city, yeah, I'm still getting to that. <laughs> um, our city number, um, we have done 134 cats, and of the 134 cats, again, it, it's been across the board, 43% have been adopted out. Um, and so we still have a lot of projects on the agenda because, you know, it was kind of our, when we started this, it was kind of our downtime. So now we're starting to uptick. Um, we have done the biggest projects that we've done so far. We've done a lot at Aldi's. We've done, um, we've trapped almost 20 at Aldi's. Um, we also have done that many at the trailer park on Lafayette Road. And, um, We've done a lot on Sturbridge. There's been 22 that if we have done on Sturbridge, there's a big colony there <laughs> that we're still working on. These are all works in progress. Um, and we did an at Nottingham Court. Um, that one's starting to, we're almost finished there. Um, there has been a lot that were there before we started this program, but we've actually done 10 more um, at Nottingham, at Nottingham Court. So um, those are our big areas um, that we've, 
but, we, but we've been all over the city. There's been numerous citizens that have called and are so grateful for the opportunity that because they just didn't know what to do to um, alleviate their feral cat problem and and try to get um, so that they wouldn't keep having kittens and in this problem in multiplying. So everybody's been it's been such a positive response. It's been really really great. Um, and like again, what I said, 134 we've done so far, but we still have a lot more to do. We're still ramping up, and it's going to be the summer, so it'll be busy, busy. Okay, what would you like? 20 that we're coming up with now. We have 20 that we just got a call mm -hmm. in the city. Oh yes, there are, there's another project. I mean, it's just one of the many projects, but there's another project on Lake Road that we're going to be doing as well. Um, we just got a call the other day for another, like he has at least 20 um, that we're going to be working on. So, um, and we actually did, um, we actually just brought in over the weekend 10 from, from that area as well of two pregnant mothers and all of their like day old kittens, like they were, and some were born last night yeah, in Carrie's were, garage. Yeah, they were birthing in the garage. Yes. I was, I was what, do you, what do you call it, the, uh, the birthing mother? Yes. I was, I was the birthing mother. So, no, it was, it was pretty fun, actually. Um, it, it, it really has been um, very eye-awakening, what we're seeing. Yes. Um, the people that we're meeting, the people that are really wanting to start helping us. Um, we're able to send trappers out now and give them the opportunity to help us. So we're really starting to network with a lot of people. And the other aspect of it is, is that um, the people that come to us, um, and not only helps the cats, but it actually helps them. They, a lot of these people are literally putting their food and security, they're putting the cats first. And so with this program, we can provide food for them for the cats so that they can have they can be themselves and and it's uh, it's really eye-opening it really is yeah it, it's the, the impact of just the human not just the cat problem but the human the human issue right the human issue is a huge issue because as we talk about people not being you know being very food insecure mm -hmm. we do tell people please feed yourself and we will provide food for the animals and we do we make sure those people have food for their animals and quite frankly if they need food, we'll go get them some food. Mm -hmm. We we have really um, helped a lot of the elderly in the community, and we want to be there for people who, okay, there's one person that we've been working with. Um, she's 88 years old. There's started with four cats, now there's 35, mm -hmm. and uh, she's very food insecure. And we're making sure that she's getting to the right resources in Medina County. We're making sure that um, she's getting help. We're not just a TNR group. We want to be able to educate and help people, not just about cats, but about humanity, quite frankly. And if we're able to cut down the population on the street, and again, my um, main goal this year is going to be going to the apartment complexes in Medina City to start. Um, and I want to roll out an agenda of um, coupons. Everyone takes a deposit for a cat into an apartment, whether it's a rental house, apartment. And I want to start approaching the apartments in the city and say, I'd like you to put another $70 on top of that. And that is for a spay and neuter. If the cat isn't spayed and neutered, they will then get a coupon to go to Medina, um, Mission Possible, and that'll be for a spay, a neuter, and a microchip. At that point, that cat will be then microchipped to that owner, and now there's a tracking record. So if these people do get evicted, they can always return the cat to the SPCA. They can return the cats to whatever rescue they get it from. But when people are offering free cats, which is the biggest thing we are trying to stop as a group, free cats are not free. You know, any veterinarian in Medina charges $350 to spay a cat. We're doing it for, you know, for $50. Um, if it's a feral you know, kitten, $70 um, for Mission Possible's price. So a $70 coupon, I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna provide that service. And then there's a record. You throw the cat out the door, okay, well there's a record, which leads to the abandonment, which is another thing that I'll be working on. So, Things that I would like to work on because this just isn't a small problem of us TNR and cats. 
-hmm. there's there's more to this and um, I didn't start this just to TNR cats I started this to make people accountable for what they're doing um, and to me uh, if you can toss a cat out you can toss a dog out you can toss a human to the curb that's a problem and to me education is a huge part of this and making people accountable for their decisions so that's kind of where we're at with Medina Meowfix. Thank you. And the other partner that um, I wanted to mention um, that has helped us tremendously is Mission Possible because without them, we wouldn't be able to do all this. And so it's been a, it's been a total group effort between the SPCA and the other um, rescue groups we work with and the Mission Possible because without them, we wouldn't be able to have any of the cats fixed. And they've really worked with us on all of the residents that have come in to bring cats in. and. And, um, and do that, and they've really, they've been, they've really stepped up to the plate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to address council? We'll just go back to the room, I guess. Sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the opportunities. I want to also speak in behalf of the uh, health department levy. I know some of you have already made cast your votes and appreciate that. Uh, the county commissioners, as you know, are uh, the taxing authority and place that, that issue on the ballot. We are not the budgeting authority. The budgeting authority actually goes to an appointed uh, council, uh, appointed uh, health department board that is selected by local governments. And I think that's an important distinction to remember because that's where the control for enforcement of state codes and other provisions of, of the law, uh, that's where those decisions are made. And we know that when it comes to law enforcement, it really is, what really matters is in the field. What really matters is whether it's fair or foul it involves enforcement. Fortunately, we have an organization with the health department, uh, the professionals there, that we find great value in what they do in enforcing the law when it comes to the sanitary, when it calls to uh, the, the health, uh, health department's uh, uh, inspection of our food services and, and other, public health, uh, other public health services. But I think the other point I would have for those members of the public that have not decided is remember that this levy leverages a whole lot more money. In other words, when she talked about 69% coming from other sources, that means for every, essentially about for every $3 that we have in local support, we're getting seven additional dollars to help provide very necessary, very important services, not only that benefit individuals, our families, but also the public health of our community. And I ask for your support and thank those that are supporting it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else that wishes to address council? Um, Mayor Hanwell, uh, members of council, uh, my name is Sandy Varndell. I live at 1014 Smoke Rise Drive in Medina, and I use she, her pronouns. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak this evening. We are here tonight to talk about the bills that have been brought forth by members of the Ohio State Legislators targeting the LGBTQ and African American communities. I am here to urge you to consider a resolution condemning these bills or, if a re resolution is not an option, to draft a letter from Medina City Council opposing such legislation to be sent to Speaker of the House Robert Cup, Representative Sharon Ray, and Governor Mike DeWine. There are two pieces of legislation that I'll talk about tonight House Bill 454 and House Bill 616. House Bill 454 would make it illegal for physicians, psychologists, or any healthcare providers to administer gender-affirming care to transgender youth. Not only is this major overreach of government that would interfere with the relationship between healthcare providers, patients, their and their children, taking medical decisions out of the realm of medical professionals and parents, but would put the health and well-being of hundreds of transgender children at risk, many of whom live here in Medina. This is not experiment, experimental medicine, but is scientifically and time-proven care, widely endorsed by medical professionals. This would prohibit hormone blockers, hormone therapy, and surgery under 18. 
In our area of Ohio, every major health care system offers medical care to transgender children. Akron Children's Hospital has a special department called the Center for Gender Affirming Medicine. These include Cleveland Clinic, Metro Health, the Veterans Administration, and SUMA, Suma Healthcare. That specialized department, uh, department at Akron Children's Hospital has so many youth seeking care that there is currently a seven month wait time to see a specialist there. Similar wait times are at other hospitals for families seeking gender affirming care for their beloved children. The wait times wouldn't be there if there were no children desperately needing the life affirming care. Another interesting fact is that the US Air Force will now relocate military families to safe states, that is where ch their children can continue to re safely receive their medical care. House Bill 616 would take control of decisions about curriculum away from local school boards and severely limit what teachers can and cannot teach in the classroom. It is exceedingly vague, but has the potential to censor any mention of race, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Our children go to school to learn how the world around them is, so that they will be well prepared to face the world as it is, not by how some would like it to be. Our public school teachers in Medina and all of Ohio work hard at teaching our children what they need to know about the world, and that people they will come in contact with include people of color and LGBTQ people, and that they're vital histories that need to be taught in history classes, that their histories and experiences are part of America's history. These lessons should not be censored by politicians. Free speech would be greatly impacted if a child who has two mommies or two daddies could not talk about their families. A child who wants to read the book I Am Jazz from the school library because it reflected who they see themselves to be would be prohibited from having these books, types of books available. It's not hard to see that this bill aims to erase a child's life experience and pretend that they do not exist by erasing diverse identity, history, and culture. A 2020 Gallup poll found that 5.6% of Americans identify as LGBTQ+. If these polls are accurate, and Medina City population is 25,671. That would mean that 1,437 Medina residents are potentially LGBTQ of all ages, zero to 100. As coordinator of out support, Medina's LGBTQ support, information, and advocacy group, I have been given the chance to visit our local schools, gender and sexuality alliances at nearly every high school in Medina County, including Medina High School, GSA, the Highland High School, and Buckeye High School, as well as Wadsworth and Brunswick. Each school that has a GSA confirms a minimum, a minimum of 50 students active in that school's GSA. There are three middle school GSA type groups as well, with numbers equaling the high school groups. On this last Friday, I was fortunate to visit the Highland High School GSA. Students there said that they are upset that adults don't understand what they experience and that they want to live as their authentic self. With bills like this floating around the Ohio State House, they're angry and confused as to why legislatures are doing this to them. Parents that I talk to with younger students here and their children here in the county tell me that their children are crying themselves to sleep at night wondering if they're going to be able to continue the medical care that they've been receiving for months or years. These bills are unacceptable in a state that prides itself on its educational colleges and education. I would like to think that both doctors and educators know what they are doing in a medical setting and teachers know what they're teaching in a public school. Many of them have trained right here in Ohio colleges and other higher education. Why would we not let them want to do what they do best? I ask that you do whatever you can to oppose these bills. Ohio children can't be traumatized and erased like these bills aim to do. Thank you. Thank you. The three of us have a similar, the three of us have a similar topic. So if, if you want to, I don't know if you want to address me particularly or wait till the three of us have spoken. I, I mean, is it the, the same topic or you got different, different? Different aspects, okay. similar topic. Okay. 
Hello, my name is Lori Kodalak. I live at 317 Stratton Drive here in Medina. My husband and I have lived in Medina for almost 50 years. We attended Sydney Fenn and Garfield Elementary Schools, Claggett Junior High, and met at Medina High. We chose to raise our three children here because it's always been such a beautiful, safe, and family-centered town. The only way I know to help someone understand the transgender experience is to tell the story through the eyes of a parent. It is my hope that by sharing our story, it will provide you insight into these children's lives that you may not have been exposed to yet. Our child is a trans man. Our youngest child was very shy, the polar opposite of their siblings. But this child of ours is also extremely intelligent, was empathetic to others from an extremely young age, and musically gifted. In middle school, Beck really struggled with depression, and we swiftly provided the medical health services he needed. He excelled in school and participated in many clubs, band, and choir. By eighth grade, the mental health issues were escalating. We never hesitated to keep looking for answers trying new therapists, et cetera. In the summer after eighth grade, Beck came up to us. We love our child unconditionally, and coming out to us did not change that. Through the next year of high school, Beck continued to struggle with depression, and finally came to us to explain <clears throat> that he was feeling extreme dysphoria. Beck has described, described his dysphoria as a feeling of discomfort when your gender identity does not match the sex assigned at birth. We sought out more professional assistance and I began to educate myself on dysphoria and the transgender experience. Through information provided by an amazing local support group, Out Support, we began working with a group of four specialists, a psychiatrist, a pediatrician, an endocrinologist, and a counselor at Metro Health in Cleveland to provide our child with the best care available for a transgender teen. We moved slowly, and the team of four had to all be in agreement before we took any steps, including hormone blockers, which allows you time to make sure that we're on the correct path, hormone therapy, et cetera. Forgive the emotion. Beck told me when he had started college, I wish I had studied harder in high school. He already had excellent grades, by the way. But then he added, but I didn't think I'd still be here. Our Beckett will graduate from the Ohio State University this year. He will pursue his master's degree in social work. Having these medical specialists available to us during Speck's early transgender journey literally saved his life. I encourage you to speak with a transgender teen from our community. They deserve to have access to the best medical care available when they need it. House Bill 454 will make it impossible for them to access the life-saving medical care they deserve. I am a suicide crisis counselor for the Trevor Project, the world's largest suicide prevention and crisis intervention organization for LGBTQ young people. When these types of legislations have been passed in other states in the last few months, these kids have reached out to us in panic about how they will continue to receive the care that they need. Please oppose House Bill 454 and 616. Thank you. Setting a timer. I'm Gretchen Long. I'm a resident of the city of Medina. I live at 800 Woodhaven Lane. And I am also here today to ask you to pass a resolution that tells our state we stand against suicide and bullying. 
Medina should be focused on conditions for all youth to thrive and feel safe, regardless of people's opinions or beliefs. As a parent, it's my job to keep my children alive, as um, my friend before me attested. It's also my job to address bullies of any age. Ohio's House of Representatives is bullying my child in a way that is very likely to lead to shame, depression, and suicide. My story is different. My child is in second grade. Last year, at seven and a half years old, our child changed from being just a tomboy to living as the boy he feels he is. Because of parents that came before us, we were relieved. We weren't upset. We'd seen signs starting at three years old and knew it was a, really, a real possibility our child may not be heterosexual or cisgendered. We were relieved because we know, my husband and I, how much greater the psychological damage is when such a recognition happens after puberty. We both know people who are gay or transgender and we know that those feelings and questions do not start on their 18th birthday. We know that they were not affirmed by their families and that causes lasting damage. So we immediately <coughs> affirmed our child because we knew that 82% of transgender individuals have considered suicide and 40% have attempted. So it was a real relief to us that at this young of an age we could advocate um, for appropriate medical care, which is exactly what we do for his older brother who has a rare health condition with considerably less research than the topic of gender expansiveness. But I digress. We're here about this. Um, so we sought gender affirming care immediately. We started with a psychiatrist right away. And we know that eventually we may need to introduce puberty blockers because we want our child to take this slowly to have the opportunity for his brain to mature before his body. We want him to observe the world around him. And we know that these puberty blockers, again, prove reduce of thoughts or attempts of suicide. So I urge you to pass a resolution against House Bill 454 so that my child doesn't become a part of this political experiment that is not backed by science. I'd like you to declare that Medina supports the research that providing gender affirming care reduces that suicide attempt, addiction, and depression. Declare that you want all our children to be happy and focused on learning, not fearing that they would be reported to a teacher by, the, or by a teacher to the authorities. So of course that brings me to the other bill that is damaging, and that's House Bill 616. Books do not teach children to be gender expansive. Our child didn't read a single book or watch a TV show whereby there was a character that was transgender. Our child feels this way because of his brain, because of what's inside him. And Cleveland Clinic has research that supports and demonstrates how the brain works. But it's not logical to think anyway that this could be taught because our child continues to ingest a ton of information from books, TV shows, his mother, going into stores about what it means to be a woman. I can also tell you that if we had any age appropriate books on this topic, our child would have saved us a year or two of running around behind him telling people he was a girl even though their eyes were telling him he was a boy. We have two other children, three and 12, so we have experience that these books do not cause them to question their own gender. They help them understand their sibling. My three and a half year old will say to you, Sawyer, Tate, and Dad have a boy in their hearts, and you and I have a girl in our hearts. Books do not teach people to be who they aren't. They teach people to be better versions of themselves. Even though our child had given us signs, the only, Okay, I'm going to skip that. Um, so when our child told us his preferred pronouns, there was such confidence in that moment. And another reason we were relieved was because he had already been bullied in school, because he presented as a boy, and teachers were telling the kids to say she. The kids were not confused, the adults were, and a book and a conversation that was relevant to that age that the teacher could have decided on would have helped all of us.
this bill isn't just about gender expansiveness, it's also about other races and other nationalities, and think back to some of the books that affected you. I know the snowy day helped me understand a black child was like me, was just like me, before I had the opportunity to meet a black person in real life. It helped me understand that apartments aren't just for grandparents, as I experienced in my life, and Llama Llama helped all of my kids understand that some families have only one parent. So a resolution against House Bill 6 16 would declare, would have Medina declaring that we want our public schools to leverage books as a tool to help students understand the world around them before they're backed into a corner, learning in fear of the person who is LGBTQ+, another race or nationality. And maybe they go home and their parents tell them different viewpoints, that's fine. At least the schools can continue on their quest to help our children be kind. And that is why I want you to pass a resolution telling the state that we stand against bullying and suicide. Thank you. Anybody else have any, want to address council? Anybody else out there? Mm -hmm. Nope. Well, we're going to take a two minute recess because I think we're getting older here and we'll start back up again so everybody can do what they have to do. <laughs> Let's start back in two minutes. So you got. Two Watch minutes. everybody looking at me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, before you recess, I just, while we're still, you go ahead. Thank you. Uh, um, I did um, speak with Sandy about this before she came tonight, and I did tell her that I would share my thoughts and comments and my support for her. So I do what I say. So I'm going to take this time to do that while we're on recess. Um, I 100% stand behind all of you that spoke today. The idea, now I'm gonna cry, of looking in the mirror and my outside not matching my inside, I can't even imagine. As a suicide survivor myself, 20 years ago I was in a place of extreme depression and if I had had that on top of that, I don't know that I would still be here. A lot of you know that um, my father lives in the Philippines. His wife is transgender. And she had access to gender-affirming care from the age of 14 in a third world country. She had access to gender-affirming care. So the idea that a country that is as progressed as we are um, could deny that is very scary to me. So I do want the public to know and I want everyone here to know that I do stand in support of the LGBTQ community um, as far as the house bills go. Uh, 454, the gender affirming one, which is the one that really touches my heart, is um, currently in the Families, Aging, and Human Services Committee. So you can Google that phrase real quick and you will find all the people you need to email. I have emailed all of those folks that were mentioned earlier uh, with my thoughts and feelings on that. But I would also like to invite you to enjoy some of the great things we have here in Medina that support our LGBTQ community. And one of those things is an event sponsored by OutSupport, the public or Medina County Health Department, the Pride program at Hope Recovery and myself, and now I'm going to forget the date, Sandy. It's the 13th, 14th. It's June 14th on the square. Um, we will be having a picnic, and then we will also be uh, doing a chalk walk like we did last year. And I am eternally grateful that for the first roughly week and a half of June, for the first time ever, all 29 flags on the square will be replaced with Pride flags. Thank you. Anybody else have any comments or wish to address council? Okay. Introduction and consideration of ordinances and resolutions. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules on three readings on the following ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 7722, Ordinance 7822, Ordinance 7922, Ordinance 8022, Ordinance 8122, Ordinance 8222, Resolution 8322, Ordinance 8422, Ordinance 8522, Ordinance 8622, Ordinance 8722, Ordinance 8822, Ordinance 8922, Ordinance 9022, and Ordinance 9122. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I will make a motion to suspend the rules requiring three readings of tonight's ordinances and resolutions. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion to suspend the rules? 
Will the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend the rules? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Motion passes 6 7 0. Ordinance 7722, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an amendment to the lease agreement renewal with William Scotsman's Inc. for the lease of a flex portable building for the Medina Municipal Court. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Ms. Lastuka. Thank you, Mr. President. This is just to extend the lease on the building until the end of the year. Any further questions? Will the clerk please call the roll and adoption of the ordinance? Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 7722 passes 7 0. Ordinance 7822, an ordinance authorizing the payment of solid ground construction for the private home rehabilitation at 420 North Jefferson Street as part of the fiscal year 20 CHIP grant program. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I moved to add it this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Dutton. Uh, yes, this is a home rehabilitation project at 420 North Jefferson, part of our uh, program year 20 CHIP grant program. Um, the amount is a, a significant project of 67,000 plus. Uh, there's a lot of work that's going into this uh, home, including a uh, you know, hot water tank, uh, new roof, gutters, downspouts, boiler, windows. So it's it's uh, one of our larger uh, chip program projects. Um, this ordinance would authorize uh, payment to solid ground construction. Uh, the reason for the emergency is to get the payment to them in timely manner due to the, to the cost of the rehab project. Thank you. For the discussion on the emergency clause and or the ordinance, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. No. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. The clerk please call the roll on adoption of the ordinance. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Ordinance 7822 passes 7 0. Ordinance 7922, an ordinance authorizing the expenditure of $15,000 to Manana excavating for the demolition of the building and restoration of the property located at 368. Foundry Street, Medina. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this expense is to uh, demolish the house at 368 Foundry Street, which is in the process of being transferred uh, to the city. Upon the completion of the project, the parcel will be uh, incorporated uh, as part of the park. Thank we you are for... using ARP funds for this project. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll and adoption of the ordinance? Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 7922 passes 70. Ordinance 8022, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a client professional services agreement with uh, Pugmire Design Group um, for the consulting services to make an application for the fiscal year 2022 Community Housing Impact and Preservation CHIP grant program. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and the ordinance. Mr. Dutton. So this is the ordinance for the mayor to enter an agreement with Pogamar to apply for our uh, program year 2022 uh, CHIP grant. Um, you received the contract in your uh, council materials that was updated shortly thereafter, taking out uh, former section 12.2 at the request of the law director. Thank you. Any further discussion? On the emergency clause and earlier ordinance. Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the emergency clause? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the ordinance? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Ordinance 8022 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8122, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of 45 P25 uh, unication pagers from Mitchell Communications for the Fire Department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. My second includes emergency clause. Discussion on emergency clause and the ordinance. <coughs> Thank Chief you, Mr. Walters. President. This is. Uh, the, back in 2019, the uh, safety services here in the city. Uh, upgraded to a digital uh, emergency radio uh, system. And at that time, uh, the only thing that didn't get upgraded for the fire department was the uh, voice paging uh, units that we used to notify the off-duty firefighters in the middle of the night when they're at home, for example. Um, so uh, that was primarily done in an effort to save some money. 
Uh, that was a tremendous cost when we first upgraded that system. Uh, but uh, we do need to bring those uh, up to the current system, the high band as we call it. And uh, the emergency calls, uh, emergency clause has been requested because that system that we're currently using is becoming unreliable. Thank you. Any further discussion on the emergency clause and or the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the emergency clause? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the ordinance? Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 8122 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8222, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to advertise for competitive bids and award a contract to a successful bidder for the South Prospect Street reconstruction project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as noted in the title, this is a project that will completely rebuild South Prospect Street between Smith Road, West Smith Road, and Lafayette. It includes new, new pavement, uh, new water line, new sanitary sewer, new storm sewer. Total cost of the project is a little over $1.6 million. Uh, we did secure a grant in the amount of $493,940 for this project. In addition, the uh, county will be responsible for $350,000 for the sanitary sewer uh, reconstruction. Thank you. Any further discussion? <coughs> Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shield. Yes. Ordinance 8222 passes 7 0. Resolution 8322, a resolution authorizing the mayor to submit a request for a grant, federal grant funds for the state road reconstruction project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and resolution, Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is the second year in a row we're applying uh, for the federal earmark for State Road. Project will extend from the railroad tracks south of West Liberty uh, to Birch Hill. Uh, the total grant request is $4.6 million. Uh, the total project cost is $6.6 million. Thank you. Any further discussion? Any emergency clause, did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Emergency clause, we were notified of this uh, program on March 31st. The grant was due April 15th. We did submit the grant already based on the Finance Committee's approval, uh, but we do need to have the emergency clause to make it. Thank you. Any further discussion on the emergency clause resolution? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the emergency clause? Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the resolution? Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Point. Yes. Resolution 8322 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8422, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to grant a fiber equipment easement for Madonna Fiber to locate their facilities on city owned property. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. Patton. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this was before council previously. Uh, Medina Fiber installed some of their equipment in the city right away uh, due to conflicts with the water line. Uh, we needed to get that equipment moved. Uh, so this request would provide an easement so they can locate their equipment in front of the Wadsworth Road uh, Fire Station. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? The clerk please call on the adoption of the ordinance. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Ordinance 8422 passes 7 Ordinance 8522, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract for the sale and purchase of real property and a contract for a right of entry relative to the West Smith reconstruction project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and ordinance. Mr. Patton. Thank you. This is one of the properties we needed to acquire to complete the West Smith project. This particular one will allow us to align uh, Baxter Street and Medina Street. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment? Any emergency clause? Did you say? Emergency clause is because it's a federally funded project, project we follow under the o ODOT protocol. And we have a strict deadline of... Uh, I think it's May 16th uh, to have all our right away acquired. Thank you. Any further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll on the adoption of emergency clause. 
Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Ordinance 8522 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8622, an ordinance accepting a right of way dedication plan of part of Smith Road and Madonna Street. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Ms. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add at this time. My second includes emergency clause. Mr. Patton, ordinance and emergency clause. Thank you. Uh, this at the same intersection with the same project. The city owns a very small little triangular shaped parcel. Um, ODOT is requiring us to dedicate that as public right of way uh, in order to complete the project. An emergency clause is because it's part of the same project. Same thing, correct. <laughs> Any further discussion on emergency clause or ordinance? Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the emergency clause? Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of the ordinance? Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Ordinance 8622 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8722, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to accept easements and contracts for right of entry necessary for the West Smith reconstruction project. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it this time. My second includes emergency clause. Mr. Patton, another one for you. Yes. It's a fun night. Um, these are, again, for the West Smith Road project. Uh, this is a total of three easements necessary for the uh, completion of the project. And we face the same uh, milestone deadlines. That's the reason for the emergency clause. Thank you. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the rolling adoption of emergency clause? Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Ordinance 8722 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8822, an ordinance authorizing the purchase of one EnviroSite Rover X system sewer camera from Best Equipment Company for the Street Department. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Piccoli. Thank you, Mr. President. So we currently own uh, in the street department a 2005 Rover camera, it's 17 years old. It's served the city well. It's having problems. Um, if this passes tonight, the uh, new updated system will allow for uh, the purchase of a camera with a $10,000 trade-in, and um, we'll be able to purchase that. And um, the camera is used for televising the city storm system infrastructure, and it helps with uh, residents problem solving as well as businesses throughout the city. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Ordinance 8822 passes 7 0. Ordinance 8922, an ordinance amending ordinance 5517 passed April 24th. 2017 relative to the membership rates of the Manana community for the Manana Community Recreation Center. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this ordinance removes the renewal rate option as part of our membership structure at the Manana Rec. Uh, this is to enable us to transition most of our membership sales uh, to online. Uh, the second part uh, in this amendment is including a membership incentive for part-time rec employees um, to help us out with uh, hiring. Thank you. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hair. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Ordinance 8922 passes. Ordinance 9022, an ordinance of repealing and replacing ordinance 1420, Past January 27, 2020, relative to the Sexual Offender Plan of Action Policy for the Manana Community Recreation Center. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Worley. Thank you, Mr. President. This is to amend the exhibit in the original ordinance, uh, updating our plan of action to align with actually being done at the facility. Um, the major change is that uh, all new and renewer, renewing members will continue to be um, run against the National Registry. Um, the only exceptions are large mass gatherings such as swim meets, basketball, um, special events, and any large rentals that we might have. Um, I did want to note this is just a proactive approach in the form of identification and awareness 
uh, to de decrease chances of an incident at the facility. Thank you. Thank you. For the discussion on the ordinance, will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Ordinance 9022 passed December. And finally, Ordinance 9122, an ordinance amending Ordinance Number 20121, passed December 13th, 2021, amendments to the 2022 budget. Move to approve. Second. Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. There's a transfer in here in the fire department, uh, passed through in parks, um, a chip grant amendment, and then finally the uh, appropriation for the land at the airport. Any further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll on the adoption of the ordinance? Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coin. Yes. Hare. Yes. Hazeltine. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Ordinance 9122 passes 7 0. All right, council comments. Mr. Simpson. Thank you. Short and sweet. I just want to congratulate Mrs. Patton for her proclamation tonight. None of us could do the job we do without you. Thank you. Any additional council comments? Mr. Uh, President, super Mr. Rose, thank you. Uh, I will make this short. Uh, Tuesday, May 3rd is uh, primary day. Vote or honor before that day. Uh, Kathy, thank you, especially for the fire drill I put you through this morning. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Yeah, Kathy drops, shot, stops, drops, and rolls anytime we reach to her, out to her. So thank you. Thank you. Like Denny said, we couldn't do without you. Uh, Medina Catfix, you're not here. But thank you for the work you do in helping make Medina better. And last but not least, another opportunity for everybody in the community to make Medina better. Uh, Medina Kids Care is putting on a horse show May 1st at the Medina County Fairgrounds. Um, there's no entrance fee for uh, observers and the audience. Uh, if you have a horse and you want to show it and participate in the competition, show up at 8.30, register. Uh, there's raffles, food, and, and the like all throughout the day. Uh, and all proceeds go to help the residents of Medina County Home. Without this help here, a lot of the residents wouldn't have any extra spending money, they wouldn't have any extra activities, they would just live in their little rooms. So Medina Kids Care does take the money, gives it to them, so those who don't have as much can have a little bit more. So thank you and uh, please participate. Thank you, any additional council comments? Just thank you, Kathy. You know I love you. I text her for stuff I could probably look up myself, but she, she never yells at me. She just does it anyway. And um, please vote, and I encourage you to vote for the health levy. Any other council comments? Hearing none, the meeting is adjourned.